Order, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If I could get a roll call, please. Have Supervisors Gilmore and Elverman are excused. All set, Amy? Okay. Okay. All right, we'll move on with the presentation from our treasurer. Um, I trust that everyone had a chance to read the information that was emailed over to them over the weekend. And since we received no questions from anyone, uh, we will go ahead and Terry will not be making a presentation. She will just be answering questions. So we'll go ahead and open up the board for questions at this time. Um, for the tax cert issued for 2010, it was a reprint of the 2009. That amount should be seven million nine hundred thirty-two thousand five hundred ninety-five dollars and sixty-three cents. I can send you a new one if you want that done. Supervisor Rose, you have the floor. All right, uh, thank you. I do have a, a question here, and that is based on this. Uh, document you call the cycle of real property taxes. If the board would take a look at that, page one. My question has to do with page two. Mm -hmm. And if our finance director wants to weigh in on this, I'd certainly welcome uh, her response as well. Uh, page two is a document called Delinquent Real Estate Tax Collection Status Report. And it's a start from uh, 2005 to 2015. At 2015, we have $2,214,338 in change. Is that just for 2015, or is that a cumulative total, uh, let's say, from 2005 to 2015? That's just 2015. No. Um, if you read across, it's um, the tax certificates that were issued were the $4,569,380.71. That was what was issued on the 2015 taxes. And the 2,214,338.99 is what is still remaining as of 720. So um, the 4.5 million plus would be the taxes, special assessments, interest? Nope, that's just the base tax amount. All right, what, what do you say are the total cumulative delinquent taxes from 2005 to 2015? $6,630,921.21. All right. Uh, and what about 2016? Um, those we don't have the information yet. We're still working on the August set settlement. Uh, after we finish settlement on the 20th, we'll have all the information from the city of Kenosha in and then we'll know what we have for delinquencies. But we haven't settled or paid out any of the municipalities yet, so we don't have a number for 16 yet. So you I'm expecting it to be um, a little less than 2015, but like I said, I haven't gotten any of the numbers from the city yet, so that's a guesstimate. So you say you'll have that number by 2000, uh, rather August 20th, 2016? Or? Actually, August 21st this 21st. year because it falls on a Sunday. All right, I, I'd like to request through the chair that the board pre be provided with one, the 2016 figure, and two, the cumulative amount from 2005 through 16. Okay, got it down. <clears throat> Any other questions, Supervisor Rose? Well, I would like to know why, if we pass through the period of recession, let's just take 2010 to 2015, we see a rather dramatic increase in delinquent taxes. Uh, 
common sense would suggest that uh, once you're through that period, they ought to be down, not up. But the percentage and then the dollar amount seem to be going up quite dramatically. Well, actually, um, it's how you, you're looking at it, I think, is a little skewed. Um, if you look at the number of tax certificates that were issued, that's for each year's tax. So we're actually, this last year in 2015, we issued fewer tax certificates than we did in 2014, and fewer than yet than we did in 2013. Now, there's normally a, a ratio, as you can kind of figure it out as you move along. Within a year of issuing the tax certificate on a year's taxes, we normally cut that amount in about half, which is where you see the amount going from 4.5 down to 2.2 million. And then another year, it's generally almost another half of that. So that 4.8 that was issued in 2014 is now sitting at 1.5. So we're collecting more, which is why the amount that's still outstanding is going down as you get to further and further delinquency. Well, what I'm looking at, and I don't want to argue with you, but if you look at 2010, $278,188, and you look at 2015, now we're over $2.2 million. And if we look at the percent of delinquent taxes at 2010, uh, 2010, they're uh, nine-tenths of 1%. And if you look at 2015, we're now at practically just a quarter, one, uh, almost 1%. One Terry, so, that's because, uh, Supervisor Rose, that's because we're, we haven't been collecting them as long. We've been working on payment plans and collections on those 2010 taxes for six years. So we've been trying to collect those for six years and that's how we work that number. If you would have checked six years ago, that number for 2010s would have been about $4 million at this point. Well, again, if you look at parcels delinquent, 2010 we're at 320, 2015 we're 1,214, quite an increase. And if we look at each year, 2010 to through 15, every year it increases rather substantially. And, and actually, 2014 to 15, it's almost 400 parcels difference. That's because we haven't finished collecting those. As soon as I send out the final notices for the 2015 14s next month, then more people start paying. Because I've been collecting the other ones longer, that number has gone down. That number for 2010 used to be that high, but we've collected all those taxes. All right, that's all. Thank you, Supervisor Rose. Any other questions? Supervisor Bostrom, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Um, thank you for being here tonight, uh, Treasurer Jacobson. Um, I don't. I don't want to spend a whole ton of time on you know how we got here uh, I think most of us here will agree and I think you will as well that there are a number of properties of course every year that fall into a category of not paying taxes and then over time they're motivated to pay taxes because they know at some time Big Brother is going to be there to take their property. But as evidenced by this long list of, of years of delinquency, it appears as if Big Brother has not been there to force the hand. So can you explain you know, why I'm looking at properties from 2005 that haven't paid taxes, why, why they're still in the sure. property owner's hands? Sure. Um, I think we talked about this a little bit before. Um, when you see how much the, the delinquencies increased during the recession, it became more and more difficult to keep up with the final notices and that entire process to take the properties. Um, we've recently hired a temporary employee to help out with that. We got $10,000 in our budget this year for a temporary employee to help with that. But the fact of the matter is about a decade ago, we lost a position in our office 
And at that time, we just continued to fall further and further behind. Now, some of the ones at the bottom are what I would call uncollectible ones. And what I mean by that are they're the properties that you're outlined in there that are in bankruptcy, fewer of them at the bottom. Most of the ones at the very bottom are the ones that are somehow a liability risk for the county. So the chance of us ever taking them are pretty slim unless we come up with another reason to, to allow Corp Council to tell me it's a good idea for us to take these properties. There are things like retention ponds, contaminated properties, things that are a liability to the county. When you get to about 2008, those are the ones that we're pretty close to taking at this point on the spreadsheet because we've uh, gotten those final notices sent out. Um, so that's how it's built up. So we're working on them. I'd say probably these bottom three years, the 05 to 07 years, those are those properties. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of what's called the orange ooze properties on the north side of Kenosha. Yep. Handful of them are those. Uh, and a bunch more are retention ponds primarily. Um, so those are problematic properties. We could just write them off and have zero there if you would like. Um, that's an option. Um, but I think it still represents a problem that we have to solve because if we're not going to take them, they're going to sit there forever. Now we could have, I think we can do a better job. And I, as I've spoken before, I've actually requested regular help to do this so that we can get not only caught up but stay up to date on payment plans and enforcing payment plans. We had hoped with our new tax system that we'd be able to run reports that would tell us when somebody falls off of their payment plan. But unfortunately, that hasn't been realized yet. And we're a year into this tax program. So I'm uh, thinking at this point, we are going to have to do it manually. OK, I'm, I'm just Go going to cut you off there for a second, because if I don't ask you this question, I'm probably going to forget, because I'm no getting problem. old. Um, you mentioned these properties at the bottom that are contaminated or some otherwise a risk to the county. Um, we're every year that they stay on the books we're still cutting a check to those municipalities correct right okay so I I would suggest to you know whomever is in charge of making this decision to figure out what needs to be done so that we can stop that expenditure because that, that makes no sense if they're never going to take uh, pay taxes and we're never going to take them it does not make sense to continue to incur that, that loss every year. So that aside, um, you made the comment that you are now in the, oh, let's say, I think you said the 2008 time frame where you're, you're starting to look at or you're, you're, you're close to taking properties back there. Um, uh, two questions, or actually one question, then I'll hop over to something else. Uh, what, when was the last time we actually took a group of properties that were delinquent in taxes? Less than a month ago. Less than a month ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and have those subsequently gone to a uh, uh, to the clerk to be auctioned off? Okay, so we haven't seen any of that information. So going back to less than a month ago, mm -hmm. how about the time before then? probably a few weeks before that. And then we had about a two month gap. What happens, I, maybe to give you a better look at this cycle thing. Yeah. Um, so what we normally do, uh, because we do have a fairly small office, and because the title companies get overwhelmed and it takes too long to get those letter reports back that we had talked about, yeah. um, is we generally send them over in groups of about 10 to 20 to start the letter report process yeah. so that we can manage all of the service that we have to do on the various parcels. Yeah. So we send over groups like we'll send 10 to Landmark and 10 to Nightberry and then wait for those letter reports to get back. Then when the letter reports get back, then we have to take all of those people that have liens on them, we have to attempt service on them, and then after we get that back, if we can't serve them, then we have to advertise. And then we have to wait 90 days after that last day of service or advertising. And then we give it to land information downstairs to double check. And then when that comes back, then we give it to county clerk. And then county clerk puts it in. So we do them in groups like that. The problem was when we ended up having 500 of them, 
that are up for tax deed, those groups, eventually you just get put out forever. I, I, I'm, I'm confused here, and, sure. and, and thank you for explaining that. I, and maybe, maybe there's a more appropriate question for, for, the, for the county clerk, but I, I can't remember the last time other than, I, I remember back in November of 2015, I think it was, there, there was, that was the last tax deed auction that I saw, but that was properties that were in our inventory. Since then, I don't remember seeing a tax deed auction. auction. And I'm on the list to receive that. So did I, am I not getting the list? Am I missing something? No, you're not missing anything. We haven't had a tax deed auction since last year because we have nothing to sell. OK. But the treasurer just said that in the last couple of weeks, she's taking these properties back. So what, what's happening here? What am I missing? I don't know. We had one in 2016 was the last sale, I remember, right? We've actually had a few sales in 2017, but they were vacant lots that we had on the auction last year that were just among the city. Yeah, that I mean, they weren't bought. recent take backs. There were no, things no, that we had in the, inventory. The last one that we received was a three, a six unit out in um, Salem that we are it's going to be raised, so that one wasn't sold. Okay. But that's the last property we took, and that was last April. Okay. All right. That was in April. Um, we yeah, have about I've, 89 that we are sitting on right now. I think you have those that are completed and waiting to go to the county clerk. Okay. All right, I'll put that aside. I'm, I'm still confused by what I'm hearing here, but I'll, I'll push that aside for a second. Um, I was given the full list uh, by your office, and thank you for providing that. And it was extremely cumbersome. And, it is very. And, I, and I'm, I'm a real estate professional. I, kind of know what I'm doing and I kind of know what I'm looking for. I, and after hearing you describe the process that you go through, sounds even more cumbersome than, than what it appears to be. Um, do, do we not have, it, do we not have computer programs that will let you know when <laughs> when properties are delinquent or when somebody's falling behind on a payment system? I mean, do, yeah, do we not? I, I can run a delinquent report, but that takes a while for it to gather in our new system. And then I can set up a payment plan in the new system, but I can't run a report to see if anybody ever falls off the payment plan. So then I have to manually go through that list that I gave you yeah. to update it on whether or not they're up to date on their payment plan or not, which as you can tell, having gone through it, takes a lot of, of time. Yeah. Okay. It was on my list of for the RFP for our new tax program, and I would say it's about 80% to where it needs to be because we can establish the payment plan, but we can't run reports to see if they've met the payment plan. Okay, all right. So that's um, really problematic. Okay, so would you say how much of your problem is an IT problem? A technology problem? Yeah. Probably quite a bit. Okay. It's very cumbersome to do the entire process. How, how, how much of your problem would you say is a staffing problem? I'd say that's, I would give it about a 40% IT, 40% staffing problem, 20% vacancy problem. I don't know if you want to throw that with the staffing problem. Okay, all right. Um, how, how do you see this problem getting solved moving forward? I have an opinion, and I'll chime in when you're done. I could see it one of two ways. Um, ideally, I would love to have a program that would help me swoop through these, and I could prepare all of these notices that I have to give um, in the system, where I don't have to copy and paste legal descriptions, and I don't have to manually check all these payment plans. I would love for that to be a solution, and that would be great in my world. But again, like I said, I've been waiting for that solution for a couple of years, and I don't see it coming. Um, so then the other solution would be more people to spend more time on the problem. Okay. Um, how many more people do you think you would need? Well, I, I was looking um, at what some other counties have that are our size. Um, Racine's pretty similar, similar to us in size, and their office size is about the same, but they, they have about three million more in delinquencies. So I'm gonna say that's probably not enough. Brown County has another one and a half people compared to what I have. I would say maybe one would probably be helpful. 
Um, that would be my, my best estimate there. Because ideally, I would want that person to focus on those payment plans, making sure people are making them. Because we want people to pay off a year's worth of taxes in eight to 10 months, so they're actually moving forward. I want somebody to monitor that when they fall off, to have the hammer come down and say, listen, you've fallen off. You need to get back on. You need to make up for the month you missed, all of those things. Um, and also to be able to do all the paperwork that we need to get done in order to proceed in the process. So if I can't have the computer program, then I'm going to need a person. So with all due respect, mm -hmm. I mean, I, as, as evidenced by the list that you provided us, out of 779 properties, there's 97 that are on active payment plans. That, I mean, while that might be a problem, people not paying, you know, as, as according to your payment plan, but the bigger problem is the, the, six, is. the 609 tax delinquent eligible parcels that that we're not acting on. I, that that to me is the the bigger problem. And I, again, with all due respect, I I don't think hiring one person is going to make as big a difference as I think everybody here would like to see happen. Um, I think it's the, still going to take time. Well, because the process takes nine months. Well, I, and and I get that, but in in a lot of these properties, we haven't even started the process. So, at some point, we got to figure out what what's going to what's going to get us over this this hump of clearing the board, and then coming up with systems to ensure that we don't ever get back to that. And this this process of you know taking 10 properties and giving it to this title company and 10 properties and giving it to that title company and oh this that whole may take 30 to 45 days that 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 just that's just not acceptable I mean I if if I were going to make a suggestion I would look at hiring um, a local consultant that might be an attorney might be a title company, might be a real estate broker, might be all three that can give us a bid on what it would take to knock this whole thing out. And of course, it'll take time. It'll take nine months from issuing the, uh, the notice and, and action being taken. But quite honestly, with, without some significant help like that, I don't see this ever ending. I mean, ever. This is not a small project. And it certainly isn't a project that can be kicked to the curb or pushed to the side because eh, it's too big. So um, those are my comments for now. I, I guess I'll get back in the queue and allow other people to uh, have some. Surprisingly, we have a lot of people that want to ask questions okay. now. Okay, super. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Supervisor Skalitsky, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just want to be clear, is the total time to take, or what is the total time to, to, from um, the start of a delinquent property or tax bill to the time we take possession? Do you mean from the point where we serve them notice to possession, or from the time when they first go delinquent to potential possession? From the time that they don't pay the most recent tax bill. Okay, so if they did not pay, let's say, their 2016 taxes, um, we will issue the certificate then in September of 2017. Then two years after that issuance, so September of 2019, we can begin the process. And that process takes six to nine months. So, you know, probably mid-year 2020 would be how that would run. Is that what you were asking? Yep. Okay. Is that uh, based on state statute or uh, county ordinance? Um, state statute. Okay, so there's not a lot we can do with that. It seems like an exorbitant amount of time. Um, you had mentioned, and, and Supervisor Bostrom kind of, you guys covered this a bit, but you had mentioned that you were short on FTEs, but I don't remember over the last three to four budgets ever seeing requests for additional FTEs in the treasurer's office. Can, can you give, enlighten the board why? Sure. Um, last year we asked for a temp employee, but previous to that, every time we get the budget memo, it's the budgets are always tight. As you all know, you guys make the budgets. 
And every time we get the budget memo, it's that things are tight. And so we keep trying to do more with less. So when we were get, going out for RFP on our tax program, we had hoped that we'd be able to acquire efficiencies with the new tax program. But as we said, we've now been live for a little over a year and those efficiencies have not come forward. So that gave us the option of last year when we saw that the new program did not have it, they said they would work on it. We requested the temporary employee for this year. And then this year when we're still have no hope that those efficiencies are gonna be recognized, we put in for in our budget for a one FTE. <clears throat> With, with regards to the um, software program that you, that you re referenced and you've just not seen the efficiencies you're looking for, can you give us a little bit of insight of who developed the user requirement specifications and how it was purchased if it hasn't yielded the efficiencies that should have been demonstrated before we purchased it? Sure. It was done through an RFP process. Um, it was about a three-year process with developing the needs in the RFP. Um, IT, Bob Galhaus in IT was our project manager who ran that project and put it all together for us. <coughs> and we were, when we went live with the system in October, we knew we were over 200 points in the RFP shy of what we had as requirements, and we were told we must go live anyway, and live we went on October 1st. So regarding the requirements that um, the Treasurer's Office needed, because it sounds to me as though this software was, was designed and, and specifically purchased to handle uh, the tax collection process, and, and maybe even more specifically the delinquent tax. I'm, is it safe to say the treasurer's office put together the requirements for that aspect of what you were going to, uh, your expectations for what the software was going to deliver? Did you guys do that or did IT do that? Um, we put, put together the list, they put together the RFP. And of the. Uh, RFP is not user specifications, RFP is quoting on it. Yeah. We had, we had a list of over 500 points that the treasurer's office identified that we wanted in our software system for users. Um, one of which was that payment plan I spoke of, another of which was um, streamlining the tax deed notice process where I'd be able to run a program. Um, all of those were in there, but they were not completed before go live date. So before we cut the PO, normally uh, part of the RFP process, uh, Suppliers will bid on it, uh, you'll, you'll identify the top couple, three of them, or whatever the case may be. You'll bring them in, and they'll demonstrate specifically what it is that their product can or cannot do, and they'll compare it directly to what the requirements different, or the requ stated requirements were. Now, 500 requirements is a ridiculous number to try and keep track of. I think you could have bucketed them a little bit more effectively. But when they brought them in, and IT was there, was it not obvious that this software system could not do what you needed it to do with regards to tax collections? At the time, no, yes, it was obvious that it could not. They did promise that it would be able to. We only had three people reply to the RFP, one of whom um, was literally 10 times as much as the other two. Um, and the other two, um, it was a combined RFP with myself and land information for the listing software. And neither of them were ideal for either of us. And we went for the one that was closest to the middle of the road of the two choices we had remaining. That hasn't quite worked out, has it? Nope. So much for going on the cheap. Yep. Um, so when, when you brought them in and you started to discover, or actually you probably purchased the software and then started to discover that it was nowhere near as effective as you want. What did your project manager from the IT department do to try and to salvage this system? And also, do you remember what the system cost, the software? It was about $150,000. Um, I would have to get something from That's IT. That's close enough. Um, and then we've been, since October essentially, having weekly meetings with GCS to try to get the software up to par. 
and while we've made some movement, we have a very long ways to go. I'm assuming GCS is the supplier? Correct. Okay. And do you have an idea at all on what we the additional expenses we put into uh, the software trying to bring it up to where we need it to be? I would not. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, so if you had, and, and you've requested additional person, right? Is this software capable of allowing that person to, to Supervisor Bostrom's stand, uh, perspective, catch up or at least start significantly reducing the delinquent properties list? I think they can start reducing it. I think if we had more efficiencies, they'd be able to reduce it quicker. Um, I think that there's still a lot of manualness involved in this. Just typing up the notice for tax deed and checking all that information instead of just drawing it out of the system seems ridiculous to me because it's all in the system. Um, and the fact that we have to type it will slow down the process. So I think the additional person would move it forward faster than what we're doing now. Do I think it's the end all be all answer to this? No, I think we also need the, the efficiencies in technology. When, when you refer to uh, a very manual and laborious process, I understand, was the software that was purchased intended and specified to be able to automate the aspects that you're stating as being too manual and cumbersome? Yes. Well, you can't fix that. Okay. Um, it's on my list of 150 things that still aren't done. I understand. We all have a significant list. But considering there's $2.2 .2 million sitting out there in just delinquent taxes, there's certainly some inf incentive to, to get this number uh, brought downward. Uh, but if the software is you're essentially trying to put a square peg in a round hole due to its lack of capability, that was a huge error in just rushing into it. Well, we've got to go live. And I've been in go live situations. Uh, okay, there it's story. You indicated there are 89 parcels that you are waiting for planning development actions. Specifically, what actions are you waiting for for them for, to allow the county to move forward and take possession? Um, planning and development was going to speak with city development. It was a subdivision that only a few homes were built on and they were trying to work with city development to figure out how to collapse the subdivision so the county clerk can then sell it. Do you know the status of that? The last activity? I heard from planning and development was about a week and a half ago and they said the city said they would get them an answer in the next couple of weeks. Do you know from your perspective, does the city have any incentive to move more quickly on those particular items, those properties? Not, I don't know. Okay. I honestly don't know. Um, because, all right, so, so there's, there's some plan development work with the city. Once that's done, then, then we can take possession of that. Okay. Yep. I, I'm not sure, but it just kind of feels like Perhaps some of these, some of the property owners are, uh, and I, maybe it's not the right terminology, but they're gaming the system a little bit here in that they've discovered that even though they don't necessarily have to pay their taxes and they can let it roll a number of years, as soon as they get on a payment plan, they're kind of back in good standing. And I realize you've said, hey, if you're not a, an, on a um, on payment plan and you stay on the payment plan, then the activity for county taking possession of that property will stay active. However, if they are in a payment plan, do, you, do we have any authority to accelerate them or to force them to accelerate? As an example, they're, they're behind five or six years. That's not by accident. Not in my opinion, is it? I understand we all have hardships and perhaps a year or two, but you usually work your way out of it or you walk away from things. Is that do you get a sense of that going on? Yeah, as, as we go through, um, we're constantly reevaluating those payment plans. When we hit one, we're like, that's not cutting it any longer. Sometimes the payment plan goes like this. They'll say, we will pay $400 a month and keep our current year taxes current. 
they may be making their $400 a month, then we notice they did not pay the city their current year taxes. So then we go back and reevaluate that payment plan with them and say, well, now you have to pay $800 a month or whatever the new number would be to help them get caught up on those taxes. So with regards to that whole activity, right, you get this payment plan set up, and then is it a manual process that you have to track that? Yep. Is this software that you have incapable of doing that? Currently, yes. Currently, I can put in the established payment plan, but I can't run a report to say if they fall off the payment plan. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll um, let some others get some questions, but uh, to the chairwoman, I would ask that we get an update from IT of why a software system or package was purchased that seems incapable of delivering what the treasurer needs. We've got $2.2 million plus probably sitting out there, and yet it seems as though we're incapable of having this software ever deliver what it needs to for them to become more automated and efficient. So we don't add a bunch of bodies like you would in 1960. This is the 21st century, and it's ridiculous that we can't get this automated. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I'm going to ask everyone to please keep their questions short. We have about 20 minutes left, and I have several lights still on the board. Supervisor Ron Frederick, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the properties that, that you have right now on a payment plan, are you aware of, of, of those properties having, uh, being financed by a finance company? Whether or not they are, I don't know. Normally we can tell that when we do the letter report. So it depends if we've run a letter report or not. Well, first thing I would suggest that you do is you run a letter report to find out if they have a mortgage. And if they have a mortgage, I can guarantee you that the finance company doesn't know that they're behind in their taxes. So I suspect that, because what you have here right now is, if I read this right, you've got 726 properties in 2013, that would mean that 726 properties are now eligible for tax deed. Am I correct? Correct. So how do you suspect that you're going to get 726 properties by adding one person through, the, through a system of tax deed? You, you've, got to, you've got to, first thing you have to do is find out if they that people have a finance, if they're financed. If they have finance companies, and, and you can do this if you have to use product. But Supervisor Bossom suggested that maybe you get somebody, uh, contract somebody to do it and track them down and then notify the finance company if they don't pay their taxes, you're going you're to take the property. That's part have of you the done process. that? That's part of the process when we do that letter so report. I'm, I'm, I, what I'm asking you now is to suggest that you find out how many of those have mortgages because the finance company obviously doesn't know or doesn't have a plan, but usually a finance company will put you, make you pay so much a month, and you gotta put it in and you gotta pay the taxes. So I would imagine that, that out of that 726 properties that are tax deedable right now, and obviously, it, 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 and some of these go back 12 years. I mean, I went through this process in 1986, and we had 2,000 delinquent properties, and by the time I left there, that was pretty well cleaned up. And we, had, and we had no computer when I came in. I'm not suggesting anything. All I'm suggesting is that somebody isn't doing their job, and I'm not saying it's you or somebody, but find out who's got mortgages, first thing. And I'll guarantee you that 726 will go way down because the mortgage company will pay their, their, make them pay. They'll make them refinance. I had a lot of those refinanced, and then they'll pay up to back taxes. I so agree. That's a, that's a start. I agree that. Um, when I first started, that was 100% true. Everybody that had a mortgage company, whenever I sent a final notice to them, to the mortgage company, letting them know about the delinquent taxes, the mortgage company would pay straight away. So why are and we doing that now? And we would get the money. During the recession, that changed. Um, now we send notices, and I would say maybe 75% of the mortgage companies pay on those properties that they hold mortgages on. The rest of them have walked away from those properties. Because but I is, think you're right. This that, isn't going to get any smaller. And, exactly. And one or two people are not going to make you get it. It's going to get larger. That's why um, we need to get to work on those letter reports um, and so that we know who to serve and if there's a mortgage on it. 
and we have to get that from either a title company like we do now, or if Super Boss, Supervisor Bostrom's idea to hire somebody full time just to do letter reports for us is an idea, that that's would be great. That's something we're going to have to do, or this is not going to get any better, Supervisor Bostrom, you're absolutely right, it's going to get worse. You got these two, these properties that go back, you've got nine properties that go back to 2005, that's 11 years, 11 years. Now, a couple years ago, a few years ago, they changed the tax deed process where it used to be three years and nine months. They changed it to two years and nine months. So this should be, this should have got better because you could take them faster. Now, there's a lot of properties are, if, if, if an example would be a property over on 75th and, 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 uh, and 7th. It's a gas station. Okay, it's sitting there. The tanks are gone. And you know why we don't take it? It's probably back about seven or eight years, right? You know why we don't take it? Because it's got a building on it. Well, you know what? We'd be better off taking Supervisor it and Frederick, paying to the building. Do you have a question for? Yeah, the question is, why aren't we taking these properties that are sitting there vacant? Tear them down. It's cheaper than paying back taxes on them because all you're doing is paying the municipalities to, to pick up to to uh, they get their money. They don't care. You got to find out the, where the mortgages are, and you said you're going to do that, okay? Because that is your start. But I think what we need to do is have a report from you every, every month or two months. And in the Finance Committee, I would suggest to the Finance Committee that we have you come in every month and let us know where you are. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Frederick. Vice Chair Esposito, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I also am perplexed by, by this whole Five minutes. tax deed issue. And I, will make, I will make my comments quick so other supervisors um, can comment as well. Um, I guess my question is, how old are your computers? My um, personal because, computer? Well, in your office, because I'm wondering, this is a great question by Supervisor Kalitsky. With today's technology, is it a problem, I mean, uh, is there a problem that this software can't um, be compatible with your computers? If, how old are they? I mean, have they been upgraded? Aren't they? Are, can, you, can you give me a little insight on that, please? My personal computer is about four years old, I would say, yeah. um, on my desk. I, I think the bigger problem is twofold. They recently just bought a new server to put the tax program on in hopes that it would run faster. We still haven't seen that efficiency happen. Um, from a receding or a report running standpoint, but that was their hope when they put the new program on a new server. Um, but I think a lot of it stems from the program itself, like you had said, Supervisor Skolitsky. We had a lot of things, and I was not comfortable going live in October, but we were told we had to go live in October. And so we are live and we are working and doing the best we can and meeting every week to improve that system. Um, okay, it, thank you. Um, in, in going through this, I mean, obviously, I was the first one to reach out to you, and we mm -hmm. talked about this when I knew how big of an issue this was. And it goes on for years and years and years, and I, 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 I still can't figure it out, to be honest with you. Um, but but my, my next question is, obviously, it, it takes, through the, you go through the tax, tax deed process. If we thought about, I mean, you take these, what, by statute 75, is, am I right, John, on that, or yep. MREM? Can, can, no, can we take them by the tax deed well, process. I suggest we start taking these in clumps, not one, two, five, fourteen. Let's take them in fifty. Well, we have to get Hundreds. those letter reports done. Um, my biggest problem is this: the reason we do them in clumps, the way I'm talking to you about now, is when I do them in clumps and I deliver fifteen or ten or fifteen to one title company and another. Generally, it takes a couple of weeks for them to get the letter report back to me. Right. Since we've been sending them. 15 every week. Okay. Now they've called me about a week and a half ago that it's going to take longer to get the letter reports back because now they have a backlog because I've been requesting too many of them. So it seems to be that catch 22 where maybe his idea is the best idea that we just hire somebody ourselves um, to do the letter reports. Because if I could just ship you the entire, that entire spreadsheet I gave to you, Supervisor Bostrom, and they could give me all of my letter reports, and then I could just have somebody sit down and hammer them all out, yeah, we could probably get them done faster. So maybe that is the answer to this problem. Well, yeah, um, I, I, that, that's good, thank you. I mean, with all due respect, I think we need some consistency here. That's, that's the problem in, in, in going through everything that I've seen. Um, I, I do believe, and I think this board will support this, I think we need to have some benchmarks set 
of where we're going and what we're doing with this um, from the treasurer's office. Uh, whether it's a consultant, whether it's, you know, we, we need to know where we're going with this. I, I personally will not accept being here this time next year with these numbers being down by 10%. I mean, we need to, we need to do something um, big. And, and with that being said, I'll just, uh, that, that, that'll conclude my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Supervisor Gentz, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I don't even have a question, but I do have comments on this. Uh, first of all, about three or four months ago, I was having a meeting with Supervisor Hallman down in the little area near Terry's office. And one of the people who retired was kind of unhappy with the situation. And being the nosy guy I am, I wanted to know why, got all the information, and approached IT on it. And I basically got the fact that um, we're working with the person who provided the, you know, the IT software to get it updated to where we need it. And I was told that I, I you know, I personally talked to IT and they said they would get back to me. They never have. Um, this, is a, this is an IT issue because the software they got is really not working for them. So this is a big cluster mess. The process isn't working. Um, I, I would, through the chair, ask the, the chairman of finance to put this on our next meeting. I would like a, a member of IT there, and I would also like any ideas that anybody has from this board about finding somebody who can do letter reports. Supervisor Bostrom, that means you. Supervisor Frederick, you brought this up. I want to know who can do letter reports for us. This is something we can't give lip service to and sit here and discuss and then walk out the door and have nothing happen. That, 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 that's not acceptable in this situation. So, and I'm not even looking to go back and point fingers. We need a solution moving forward. So I would request that this goes on the next finance agenda before the budget and we analyze and we get somebody from IT in there. So maybe we need to go to a different program. Maybe we need to do something to modify it. I have no idea. I'm not IT. I can't micromanage that. But there has to be a solution here because this is unacceptable. So we need to move forward with that. So if we could have that on our next agenda and make sure somebody from IT is there. So Terry, you're there. Um, somebody who has an ID on letter reports is there. So we can analyze this process and figure out a solution to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Gens. Supervisor Poole, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I became aware of the slowdown of the delinquent property taxes when a constituent asked me why it was taking so long for the property next to him to get on the sale list and he asked me for assistance in getting the sale expedited and when I called your office uh, they told me it was around 69 months and I think that was six to nine months and that was about a month ago I, so do you think that timetable can be moved up any or what is your estimate now Oh, well, it depends on the process, and I think the one you had called on, um, we have done the notices, so I think it's still going to be about six months on that one. Um, frankly, it has to start, and it has to get to that point where we serve everybody for that clock to start ticking. So we have to get those letter reports done, and we have to do that service and or advertising in order for those, that 90-day clock to start ticking. So until we get those done, it's 90 days after whenever we get those done. So I think that one, we are in the midst of advertising right now because I think the owner was deceased or we were unable to serve them. Um, and so once that last date of advertising, it will be 90 days after that date. So it's, it's set by statute, the amount of days. It's getting that first step to get that clock ticking. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Supervisor Poole. Um, Okay, we're running out of time and I have three more lights on the board, so please stick to questions. Supervisor Rutzloff, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have a question on the collection part. Do you, when that, what is the, when you say you set up a payment, a payment plan, what does that look like? Is that, I mean, is that something you say, how much can you afford or how do you do that? Normally, we, we give them a number. I tell everybody to start with getting a year's worth of taxes paid off in eight months, and then we can stretch that as far as 10 months. Okay. Do uh, you, okay. Do you, how, do you set them up on employment plan with credit cards or with bank statements, or how do you do that? Nope. We don't. Oh. 
Are, it's based on what they're owed. Okay. I have no access to their credit cards or right. bank statements. I, I'll make this quick. I've experienced, if you want to talk about delinquent payments, be in the medical business. Oh, I'm sure. Doctors never get paid. <laughs> okay, and I've seen presentations done by people that charge very little to do that, and it's not complicated. They'll send out the letters, they'll set up the billing cycles, they'll do the credit cards, the bank statements, and they will only ask, the only thing they'll charge for that is they get, their, they get the juice on the credit cards, and the rest of that is pretty much free with the software. So just a quick comment, that I've seen it, and this is like Mr. Skupai Sklitsky, we gotta get in the 26 to 2017 on technology on this. This isn't difficult collecting with technology. It's out there, it exists, so thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Supervisor Resloff. Supervisor Decker, you have the floor. Uh, I just wanted to comment to Supervisor, Sk one of the things is Supervisor Skalitsky, um, it's not two million, it's over six million that we're owed, just to clarify. Um, so we've got 10 years running, um, and we got a new program that went live last year, October. Why did we wait so long? We got 10 years, we got millions of dollars. Why have we waited so long for this? Why, why weren't we on this in 2012? We were already searching for our new tax program in 2012. We had started the RFP process mid-2012. So uh, not, just, not just based on the, ta the tax program, why weren't we keeping up with this before we had the program? We fell behind and no one told anyone about this and it's just been worse and worse. Why haven't you been ringing alarm bells since um, 2005? Actually throughout, um, up until 2012, I think it was, or 13 when the, 2013 when the number of um, certificates started going down. Uh, every year I prepared a spreadsheet for a finance committee that showed the amount of certificates that were issued and how we were going on last year's certificates and the collection. It was a little one page thing that we did every year. So you did one page once a year and didn't, weren't ringing alarm bells. You just did a presentation one page once a year. We were talking about how the collections went and we did it every year. And you weren't, you weren't, um, alarmed at the rate it was going? Oh, uh, we were. Everyone in the entire state was alarmed at the rate of the recession. Um, and how many more were going tax delinquent than had ever gone before. And at that time when you were alarmed, what, what processes were you putting in place to, to alleviate the problem? We were searching for a technology answer to that. That's why we started the, part of the reason we started the RFP process was to find a way to better deal with managing the payment plans and the tax deed process itself and the manual nature of that. Um, and then we also, we also um, we're working with people on a regular basis. Every day, we're talking with people who just go delinquent before they get to the tax deed process, because we want them to get on payment plans before they get to the point where we could take it for back taxes at three years. So that was a huge thing during the recession, was just keeping up with phone calls of people who were calling. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Decker. Supervisor Rose, you have the floor. All right, thank you. Uh, I would like to um, move and suggest that uh, the committee, that this board uh, uh, create an advisory committee uh, with Supervisor Bostrom, if he would agree. Uh, he seems to be very knowledgeable and interested in this uh, and um, work with the county executive to name some people to that committee who could set up some standards or benchmarks to examine the issues uh, and develop a, a solution here so that we don't leave this meeting with the whole issue kind of confused and uh, uh, nowhere to go. So that would be the first point of my proposal here. And the second point would be that the treasurer be instructed to report monthly to the finance committee on the progress of reducing these tax delinquencies. And three, that uh, if she needs some assistance, the finance department, uh, and based on some conversations before this meeting, would uh, assist in developing a work plan for the treasurer exus using existing finance uh, staff to assist with some of these duties to clear up these back taxes. So that's my motion. Those are the three points, and I think if the board 
votes for this establishes it will have some direction and movement on this issue. But I think that it's necessary for a motion and support from the board so we know we're, we have some plan of attack here. This is not a, we can't actually have a motion and vote on this. Is that right, Mr. Uh, All right, well, I would suggest that that be, uh, that be implemented and if we can't do it, we can of course put it on the next meeting's agenda. Right. But uh, we can also suggest it here this evening and uh, hopefully that uh, some of these points like creating the finance, the advisory committee, I think you under the rules, Chair, can do, create special committees like that. And I say I would suggest Supervisor Bostrom to chair that, perhaps name some people to the committee. Uh, I think uh, you as chair can suggest, as I have tonight, that she report to the Finance Committee and we'd, we'd I would so suggest that we meet monthly as a regular part of our agenda and she report to us. And three, the Finance Department is willing to work with her in setting up an existing plan uh, a, a plan for using existing county staff that uh, that be carried out, and I understand the finance department is willing to do that. So, I completely agree. So we will get those processes in place. Thank you. All right. Um, I am seeing more lights, and we are out of time. So if there's anything that you can make real fast, do you have one question or multiple questions, Supervisor Holman? A short one. We'll see. You have the floor. Just one thing, Madam Chair. This is why we need an IT committee. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Gens? I want this on the next finance agenda. I mean, Supervisor Rose made other proposals and stuff. I want this on the next finance agenda, and I want IT there, and I want letter report solutions. So I, I want think he has already put that okay. on his paper. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're done with those. Thank you, Treasurer Jacobson. Um, it's been very enlightening. We are going to take a five minute break so that we can get everything to set up, but we do need a motion to adjourn first. Second.